Hey, hey, what's up, family and friends? Today, by request, I'm going to talk about attachments. Non-physical, conscious beings who attach themselves to those of us who are having a physical experience or what we call real life and a lot of people are going to be really surprised when they find out that this is far from what is really real this is an aspect or one perspective of reality but reality truly is infinite and depending on our level of consciousness or what sphere of reality or dimension that we are on we can decode more of that greater reality now I cannot talk about attachments without first laying some ground information in this regard because I know there are a lot of people who are just coming into this and from the perspective of one who believes that we're just bones flesh and bones in a brain and without any of it we can't possibly exist a lot of this stuff is going to sound crazy but ironically you already know this we all already know this we've just forgotten how do we forget when we come into physical reality even within a small fragile form that from our physical perspective a baby from that perspective even a a baby is very heavy and dense from the perspective of a being whose natural state is fluid and not bound by gravity gravity not bound by the laws of this particular density and when we when we come into this the birthing process is traumatic on top of your natural state drastically being restricted this is a realm of extreme limitation so when we come into a situation like this as fluid conscious beings we go into a state of trauma and that trauma creates amnesia and we forget most of us forget who we really are where we come from and we lose the sight and connection of the greater reality Throw in all of the devices that are in place to keep that amnesic barrier going and you will better understand how and why these things that people such as myself bring forth would sound crazy and outrageous. The truth of the matter is that you are multi-dimensional. There's an aspect of you right now watching this video or many aspects of you that you are not even consciously aware of that's doing things that you aren't consciously controlling from this perspective it's just like the physical body right now we have trillions of cells within our bodies with their own DNA doing things that we are not consciously aware of so you myself and everyone around us represent a cell a sphere of consciousness that is connected to an infinite body and that infinite body is consciousness. It is conscious. It is aware. Consciousness does not exist in the brain. The brain processes consciousness. And the brain filters and decodes what we see, what we feel, what we believe based on our life experiences, based on the DNA programming, based on how we eat, what we don't eat. There are so many factors that come into the to play. So you must and we must remember because we already know this we must remember that we are fluid interdimensional multi-dimensional beings by nature when people say astral projection is the work of demonic behavior and all th this is coming from a place of programming and a belief system and because there are those of us who believe in this this awareness or remembering that they too astral project will be shielded off when they shift back to the perspective of a brain that's filtering this universal truth everyone astral projects everyone is multi-dimensional to a degree some more so than others everyone is multi-dimensional to a degree um and again, we all have the potential to be greater than and more than. But again, if we had those filters, those beliefs, uh, the, the level of consciousness that is in place or that restricts us from 
owning or embracing that, then we have to work with what we have. This is not something I've read from books. This is my personal experience. I've always had an awareness beyond my age. I have family members who watch me and, and have known me all of my life and they can testify that they, I always had something about me that was just outside of the norm. But my point is that I'm nothing special in that I just managed to, for that, for whatever reason, managed to remember and not completely disassociate or forget where I come from and what I am a part of. And when we remember these things, we're far less likely to engage in disgracism, aka racism. We're far more, more likely to not participate in the death and destruction and oppression and suppression of our brothers and sisters because we will know, we will remember that they are us. They are a part of us, whether we like it or not. And so it is time that more of us understand how and why we are falling into the illusion of separation to the point where we want to prey upon our brothers and sisters, why we want to destroy and tear down our brothers and sisters. This is out of an unnatural state. And a lot of this is driven by what I said before, the veil of forgetfulness, the amnesic barrier. But there's another element that drives and fuels this. And that is the lower level attachments. Conscious beings who are severely detached from the whole to a point where they are cut off. And they are cut off because they've done it to themselves. Many, 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 many years of inflicting dominance, control, pain, suffering death, destruction, misery has created an amnesic barrier that's greater than Fort Knox. That's a metaphor, but that's the best way I can describe it. And so for these particular beings, and they are still our brothers and sisters whether people want to accept it or not, but for them, the amnesic barrier is tremendous. And they don't have the connection to source in the way that some of us who are somewhat disconnected or temporarily disconnected these particular beings have practically doomed themselves and so to sustain life you need an energetic source you need sustenance in this reality we need food we need sustenance that's uh, or, or nutrients that is bound by the laws of this realm that created the physical body. So we have to eat to sustain our existence, but we are also part energetic. So we eat for the physical aspect, but we also eat for the energetic elements as well. Non-physical beings need things that feed them and nurture them from where they are based on what they have access to, what they believe, with, even without a brain because they are conscious beings. Again, everything in the universe is consciousness, but not everything and everyone is self-aware. This is why we have so many people on the planet who are just like zombies and there's no coincidence with the constant focus now on movies about zombies. We are we are alive in the physical world, but we are not living. We don't have any awareness of who and what we truly are. This isn't about promoting religion. This, this is just the nature of reality. Ironically, one of the reasons why religion 
resonates so much with so many people is because there is a lot of truth in the different religious belief systems. They all touch on a greater reality that we cannot see because that is true. Now, I don't want to get into whether religion is true in itself or not, if it's good for the people. I'm not getting into that. What I'm saying is that we all know on an intuitive level, even when we are somewhat unconscious, we know and feel there's more and we resonate with things and information and programs that may have some truth or a lot of truth. So, with that as the premise, understanding that you really are a fluid multi-dimensional being consciousness first and foremost you are organic light organic light isn't like the artificial light we see around again I remember this I experienced this organic light is conscious it is alive it is fluid it feels like water organic light has a wetness to it but we cannot perceive it we can't feel it from this perspective because again all of the filters the amnesic barriers the belief systems prevents us from decoding the brain does not or cannot break down the greater reality because it only processes a limited amount of frame or decode a very small fractal of light and information whereas when we are outside of this we see much much more because the filters fall off when we when we physically when physical life is over with we, we we merge with the greater reality and we are able to see more let me give you another example we all dream everyone has had a dream when you're in a dream state you see everything that you see in physical life is that dream real yes dreams are real from the perspective that even if you are creating it with your own mind it is real to you and if you are merging with a a dream state that was co-created by other minds it will still be real to those who experienced it. it's created by consciousness it's created by thought and within that sphere of consciousness and experience everything feels just as solid just as real as this here so you know in those realms we don't have a brain we don't have all the things we believe we need to exist so how is it that you are having a real conscious experience in the dream state it's identical to this physical 3d reality and the two one be fake and one be real think about that is the dream state is comprised of the same kind of properties when it's all said and done the only difference is that here in the dream state the laws are different depending on what we where we are in our level of consciousness or total recall or remembrance but in this reality there's extreme extreme limitations and the others the limitations are lifted and you can do more and you can be more depending on your level of consciousness what you believe etc so again I'm reminding you of something that you forgotten this reality is a, another form of it could be decoded as a dream you know I think of the song uh, row your boat um, you know it's a row 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 your boat gently down the street merrily 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 life is but a dream and there's some truth to that life is like a dream and when you go to sleep at night you go into another reality that is like a dream both are just as real and just as physical from the conscious perspective just different laws you're outside of time because time really is an illusion here time is linear in our alternate states or alternate realms of consciousness time is cyclical meaning we're aware of multiple things at the same time within the same cycle or same circle or realm or sphere I'm always using sphere it I replace spirit with sphere it I do it for a reason because that's really who we are now as that as a premise I would like to talk about who these lower attachment entities are and why they do what they do I kind of touched on it already these are beings who are cut off from source and because of the way in which they became trapped and doomed with ego, fear, 
etc their life force is misery it is death it is destruction and so for them food is the energy that we in this realm create when we are in misery and when we are participating in violence death and destruction so in order for them to feed they can't physically come into this world uh, and stay for long some of them can but they can't stay for long because again the laws are different so in order for them to to sustain their life they need a host they need the very thing that drives them that fuels them that makes them who and what they are so humans who are having a physical life are being used as a energy and food source they feed off of low vibratory actions thoughts and behavior and so what they do is they attach themselves to those of us who stay in a low vibratory stream of consciousness but at the same time still have a connection that they don't have to the greater source where the energy continues to flow and be recycled so what they do is they latch on to the aspect of the physical host that they have access to and that is the lower energy points in the physical body and when they attach themselves they can influence the religious people call them possessed they can influence the host the physical body the person who is um, reveling in and enjoying and feeding low vibratory thought forms behaviors etc they can in possess them and influence them to do more of it to generate more of it so that they can exist so that they can sustain life this is where the whole saying misery loves company comes from misery also loves food that is miserable that comes from a place of pain and hurt now pain and hurt and all that it can serve a purpose um, and it does serve a purpose. I don't want to get into that. I'm just simply explaining the nature of those attachments that influence a lot of things on earth that is very destructive from the perspective of those of us who are operating on a higher level of awareness and consciousness. So when we look around, we basically see a, a civilization that has been engineered, socially engineered, to create these energies how is this done because these lower entities have basically sought out and have attached themselves to a lot of the people who make decisions in the world and so they can use them to create situations to to, that will socially engineer a society to generate more low vibratory unconscious streams of energy so that they can again continue to latch on so that they have sustenance so that they can basically create a reality that is heaven for them but hell and misery for others so we need to be mindful that violence may be cool from your perspective but that's also a sign that you are in a low vibratory state of consciousness and you may well have an attachment that's fueling that if we are attracted to dark morbid destructive behavior when we lash out at someone who has lights bringing information who would even try to help those of us who are sick lost scared and confused and you lash out you very well may be under the influence of an attachment and what happens when physical life is over with a lot of us we end up on that realm with them because that's all we developed that's the stream that we created for ourselves a lifetime for some of us and we end up being one and become and matching in consciousness and go with that sphere that stream that we have been 
developing and feeding and giving energy and attention and focus to. We become one with it. Now there's always redemption. There's always the opportunity to get out, but no one is going to come and take us out. We have to earn it by our own will, by our own intent. We have to we have to put in the work to come up out of that if that is something we don't want. So every time we sit back and allow our brothers and sisters to suffer, I don't care what the outer form looks like, when we participate in that, when we allow it, realize it always comes full circle and we all end up paying for it to some degree because that is an aspect of you or us, whether we like it or not. So, starting today, if we happen to love things such as violence, tearing people down, death, destruction, oppressing, suppressing, running around and just using sex to feed our ego, you may well have an attachment. And you know what's really ironic and what's interesting? I hear a lot of people talking about their fear of astral projection and their fear of the unknown because they fear these entities, these beings who are parasitic in nature. And brothers and sisters who tap into the outer realms can attest to this. Do you know that more than often, these beings are more afraid of you. Why? Because you have access that they don't. And as long as they can make you believe that you are powerless and you are nothing, and they have all of this power over you, that's what you will create. It reminds me of a bully, the relationship with a bully. A bully will, will target someone that they perceive as weak. And usually those of us that are perceived as weak are just people just minding our business. We don't want to hurt nobody. We just want to give love. We don't bother anybody. And we've seen it time and time again. What happens? That bully tried to dominate. They want to inflict harm and fear and, and, and feed off of that person that they perceive as weak. And what happens when that person that is perceived as weak what happens when they finally had enough? They rise up and you see a side of them you never thought and they will beat that bully to a pulp in some cases. Or they will stand up to a point where that bully will never mess with them again because that perceived weak being doesn't have that kind of mentality. But if pushed, they will pull forth or bring forth that power and show you or show us that they have a lot of power but they don't have to use and abuse it and mistreat and suppress and oppress other people to be powerful but if push comes to shove they will show and time and time again what power is so these lower entities that many of them are the same way and it's so ironic when I see people who always talk about being fearful of them they feed off of fear by the way I didn't mention that but they feed off of fear as well I, it, when I used to see these, some of these beings, I would always wonder, why would they all, they would always look at you, look at me like, you know, like, oh my, does, does, does he see me? I don't want to look him right in the eye. And I, I didn't understand in the beginning, but now I know, because these beings know what we, who are not totally disconnected, because we have more access to energy, power, than they do. And at a thought, a thought alone, we can really inflict some serious damage. And I'm not advocating that, but they know it. That's all I'm going to say. This video ended up going a little longer than I had expected. Uh, but that's some food for thought. As always, continue to question, learn, and grow. And never forget the ultimate illumination will always come from within. Go inside, hold on tight, and go for what you know.